Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate everybody for listening to us tonight. Thank you so much to uh, everybody that's listening to us in Atlanta, Georgia. See the lights on down there. I see the lights on for my family back home in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, we got some folks out on the West Coast of L.A. listening to us tonight, too. So shout out to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to those folks listening to us on TuneIn as well as those folks that are listening to the replays on YouTube. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Big Rube definitely has a sixth sense or something because in the, as we close out that last segment, he foreshadowed a visit from one of our favorites here. First Lady of Legacy Internet Radio has joined us, is in the building. Shout out to comedian Esliss P is up in this ow, joint. Ow. What's yes. up, man? I heard the salute from the hallway from my <laughs> brother Big Rube. So I was like, wow, they have built in cameras now where they can see you walking from the parking lot. But no, you just got it like that, brother. In I the mean, interest yeah. of full I, disclosure, we didn't know. Yo, I appreciate the summons. I, hey. I felt it coming hey. and as soon as I felt it, I got on the road. I, but felt, I felt the call sign. I feel like I had to put it out there and there you coming through the door. That's Beautiful. so awesome. And I'm so glad to see you. It's been a minute. It has. It has. Very glad to see you as always. And you too, Marcus J. And I am so excited to be here so i can get in on these topics well we're definitely glad to have you we Thank appreciate you. you being here it's definitely a pleasant surprise and definitely glad to have you so let's get into Yay. it you up first uh roanoke virginia last week on wednesday somber story but we got to talk about it uh vester flanagan is the name of the shooter who walked up to allison parker and adam ward who are the reporter and, cal and cameraman that were doing a live shot on location. And uh, he basically killed them on air, on live television. If you were watching out of the Roanoke, Virginia area, uh, you saw the events unfold in real time. Uh, and so um, I, I think we've talked, maybe not on the show, but certainly offline and in our personal conversations with our friends and family and people that we trust. I mean, we've had plenty of conversations about Vester Flanagan and what was going on with him and all that kind of stuff. And feel free, you know, if, if, if either of you want to go there, you know, to do so. But what I wanted to really talk about is my feelings on the possibility that this may happen again like have we set a new precedent so you guys don't have to go there you can speak on the subject in any way you want let's see you up first what do you think um i actually think that it's it is very very sad it's a very sad situation and i think um it actually hits a lot of us even if we don't know people personally in journalism or who is a reporter for the news, um, just having your favorite reporter when you watch your, you know, five o'clock news or what have you, um, to have that happen. So I feel like any way, shape or form, it's a very, very um, tragic situation. And, and it's almost funny because as I look at the news now, I don't know if it's me, but it almost seems like the mode has changed for every news station that I watch, even, you know, locally here in the Richmond, Virginia area. And I don't know, just like you were stating, Marcus J, if now, you know, is there a fear almost, you know, now that reporters still go out in the field um, and still make live reports, do they, are they more conscious now? I'm pretty sure that they are, you know, now you have to really look over your shoulder. You know, even if you go and do a report at the county fair, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. Um, and I worry about even the, the radio host. You know, you have people out there who know your name or, you know, you may use an alias, but then if you have your Facebook pages or what have you, they see what you look like. So, you know, people are crazy. Again, like you see, they walk up to you and they do awful things. Um, but it, it's, it's just, you know, what do you do? I mean, I, I always hear you say as well is you don't live in fear. And I hear a lot of people say that. I unfortunately feel now that I am living in a lot of fear here lately, um, even though I guess, again, you shouldn't, but I do. You know, again, they were doing their job, six o'clock in the morning, 
something, you know, for a grand opening, something for the family, something for the community, and then what, on live TV? I mean, you've basically did something to everyone's mind who was, who was watching it that morning, you know, right. who was drinking their morning coffee, getting their kids ready to go to school. I mean, I'm pretty sure you stopped in your tracks, you know, for the rural area, you know, for the people who view that, but it's awful. I don't, I mean, what do you do? I mean, how do you change things? How do you be safer? I mean, how much more safe can you be? How much more safer can you be? Right, right. The times are changing and everything is different now with regards to how we navigate through the world that we have to share with each other. Big Rue, what do you think, man? I mean, I feel like this is really like the first time that something like this has happened in such a a crazy way. You know, it was live TV. Um, I feel like this was definitely premeditated. I definitely feel like this was planned. Um, I don't feel like it was a, oh, let's just shoot somebody today. I don't feel that kind of way. Um, you know, I posted a little bit on this, you know, on my personal site. And pretty much, you know, my thought process is, you know, Mr. Flanagan, I, I understand you had some challenges because apparently, you know, he had some challenges at that station and a couple other stations and things as such. But, I mean, dude, I mean, was it worth this? Uh, I, I, it's hard for me to ever fathom, you know, that taking another person's life is something that should be done you know in a revenge manner i could understand if these people like it may not be right but i could understand if something was done direct to your family you know um even you know i i get it he says stuff was done directly to him you know i understand that but the, i guess it's, it's to me it's just real messed up Right. I think there are other ways to deal with that, and it's not like. Well, let me let me let me stop you and kind of pose a question to you. Yeah. Um, because there there are some who would agree that uh, he had issues with them because of how he allegedly was treated by them. There was some uh, discrimination that he mm -hmm. alleged, and 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 things of that sort. Um, he had, we obviously know that he was troubled because of some of the things that have come out about him. But yeah. those people, those two, Allison and Adam, mm -hmm. allegedly were were targeted because of how they allegedly treated him. And his response was to kill them. Um, and I I went personally, you know, because I knew that people would want to know what I thought about it. So, you know, I, I publicly called the guy a coward for, yeah. for, for doing that. What, should, what say you about that? Oh, he definitely. And, you know, and the thing about it was, if it happened like a month ago, you know, they dissed him a month ago, I, I, wouldn't, underst I wouldn't agree, but at least I'd try to understand. Yo, this has been like two years. He got terminated in 2013. I mean, really, dude? You held on for this that long? You couldn't find something else? I mean, you couldn't have moved on? And, and I understand some people have a hard time moving on, but you really, I mean, this was worth you know, that, I mean, because, and, and then, as far as the coward situation, I will go, I did not call him a, a, a coward on my Facebook because, you know, publicly I, on that, I really can't do that just because of what I do. Um, however, um, he's definitely not the smartest dude on the planet. Um, and then I, I am on record for not feeling very positive about people who, have the nerve or the uh, or the cojones as they would say to take someone else's life then turn around and take their own that is a cowardice way out I mean you do the crime you do the time and for me as I said on my post the real messed up part about it is you know we have three families who are affected by this you know so to me that's a real selfish thing for him to do to to extinguish the lives of two people and then to extinguish his own you know you ain't here to deal with the with 
what happened. Right. You ain't here. So thank you for putting your family and their families through all this unnecessary grief when you could have just dealt with whatever situation you had. I don't, you know, at, as a person and, and that sort of thing. And that's, that's where I find the cowardice. Well, let me, let me add something I want to ask you both. Um, first of all, let me get this comment. And that's why I'm still listening. She says that she is sure it's pre, uh, premeditated, sad situation. Uh, like you, Ruben, sorry for the families uh, of the lives, uh, families uh, and the lives that this man has taken. It's awful that he took a coward's way out. And she's speaking directly to me, no matter what anyone said to him, murder's not the answer. So I guess she's agreeing with me. Um, there are some, Lissa and, and Ruben, that are suggesting that this was a hate crime. What's your thoughts on this being a hate crime? Is this a hate crime or is just a guy that happened to be black that killed two white people? I mean, Well, I, I guess I really, again, have to find out what the definition of hate crime is and who is given the definition because, again, in whatever manifesto, whether he wrote it or somebody else, it said that he had issues with white women and I think black men. So if it's far as hate crime being racism charged, I don't know, you know, that that would be a hate crime being that he said he has something against, you know, the same race as him. Right. Um, I just feel like, you know, and also getting back to what you said, big group, people can hold grudges that long. I mean, you have oh, some yeah. people who will hold grudges from high school till they die. I mean, to like old age. There's some old folks that I even know personally who has not let things go since like 1950 from a sister-in-law that they had and they're dead now and they still talk bad about them. You know, so again, and especially if somebody I feel like interrupted your livelihood as far as paying your bills and things like that, you don't know what you would do if you're backed into that corner. And I understand you say that you may not go to the extreme of killing anybody because I feel like that you're in that good mental state where you know that is bad. Um, but apparently Mr. Vester or whatever his name was, was not there. Um, I also heard talk in the news as far as when people say he should not have been able to purchase a gun, you know, being of uh, the type of person that he was. But my question is, is if he was never in the system or if he was never put anywhere as far as having a mental issue or what have you, then I'm pretty sure when he went to purchase that gun and put the deposit down, nothing came up in the system. Yep. Absolutely. So I don't yep. know as far as also when they said he was escorted out of the job, you know, two years ago, was there a report filed to where it would have been you know, been in the system. So, right. you know, as far as the law against guns, I feel like it's not the guns, it's actually the, the people. people. Yeah, I, I can dig it. Ain't no has to have Marcus. Yeah, I looked up hate crime, uh, listen by definition. Thanks. It says a crime motivated by racial, sexual, or other prejudice, typically one involving violence. Uh, and so, uh, there's another one that says generally refers to criminal acts that are seen to be motivated by a bias against one or more types above same 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 thing. So, okay. you know, I guess someone Thanks. who wants to twist that could probably figure out a way to twist that. Me personally, I just think that you had a guy who had some issues that uh, he just snapped and he killed two people that he worked with. I think this is more workplace workplace violence than than hate crime. It's right up there when. I, I guess, you know, years ago, you used to say go on postal was kind of the phrase, mm -hmm. you know, because there was a rash of people who worked in post offices who mm -hmm. were doing these kinds of things. Uh, and now anytime people kind of snap at work and shoot people or hurt people at work, they say go on postal. I think this is more a go on postal type of situation than a hate crime. That's just my opinion. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I stayed at the Holiday Inn once, but I ain't a lawyer, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, half stepping with Marcus J. Is uh, Holiday Inn equal to the Super Eight? Because I stayed there. Yeah, I think they're like right on the same level. I think you're lying just to try to not hurt my feelings, I mean, but that's okay. I'll stay at the Roach yeah. Motel. Twelve ninety nine a night. Uh, cousin Terry, who's going to join us later on in the show, she says that uh, you're right on, Lisa, when you say that it's it's not the gun, it's the people. So she's. 100% agreeing with you. I, I want oh, to. Oh, cousin Terry, I can't wait to talk <laughs> to you later, sugar. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Oh, I've perked up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ain't no half step yeah. with Marcus. Right, listen, we're going to have uh, a conversation about uh, the Houston police officer that was, or the deputy that was killed 
by the man in Houston over the weekend. But before I do that, I want y'all to take a listen to this conversation that happened on Fox News because it's going to kind of lead me to the next line of uh, things that we're going to talk about in the show. Take a listen to this and then let's get some comments in on this. Minnesota, hours after Texas Deputy Darren Goforth was executed uh, in Texas. So what's going on in our country? Joining us right now to react is the executive director of Black Sphere, Kevin Jackson. Kevin, your reaction to Friday's events followed by Saturday's events? Well, the Friday events were tragic and uh, certainly a, a stain on the nation. Saturday is pretty much uh, par for the course these days, Brian. Uh, if you recall, they, they had the same chant a while back when another officer was killed or and then of course we've had the uh, the officer that got beat up on camera and they filmed him so it's the unfortunate thing is this is the black lives matter movement which uh, can only be described as nonsense is creating a lot of this type of thing around the country sure. and it's going to backfire quite honestly Kevin, why has the black lives movement of black lives matter movement not been classified yet as a hate group I mean, how much more has to go well, in this direction before someone actually labels it as such? Well, they should do it, but unfortunately, it's being financed by the, uh, the leftist. And ironically, it's, it's people that have nothing, really no concern at all about black lives, uh, people like George Soros. And of course, it's, it, it's a trickle-down theory on the, trickle down, uh, on the left with this uh, going forward. But the, the sad part about it is the impact that it's going to have in the black community and the fact that it takes away so much thought about what really is the problem in the black community which is a lack of black whole black families and what it allows people to do is sort of say hey let's point the finger at everything but where it really needs to point uh, if we had more black families whole in the, in the community we, we right. would have a lot less of this if we had clergy who were willing to support real issues and change in the black community we'd have a lot less of this and of course we've got the congressional black caucus who actually loves this type of strife well, it's very interesting. They interrupt. Ain't no half stabbing with Marcus Jai. Road lesson. That's Fox News take on Black Lives Matter. Now, I when, love we, when we when we get to this story, uh, well, I guess we can get to it now. Uh, we're talking about the deputy. Um, this 30, 30 year old Shannon Miles has been charged with uh, capital murder. And the fatal shooting of Deputy Darren Goforth in the back on Friday evening at a Houston area gas station as Goforth was fueling his car. Um, excuse me. So he basically rolls up on this dude out the blue and executes him and, and, and literally executes him. Um, I don't know, Ru, Black Lives Matter, they want to attach to this going down uh i'm surprised i didn't hear it attached to uh vester flanagan but it's certainly attached to this guy uh the deputy uh or the sheriff said we've heard black lives matter all lives matter well cops lives matter too hickman said at any point where the rhetoric ramps up to the point where calculated cold-blooded assassination of police officers happen this rhetoric has gotten out of control do you think these two things are connected or do you think that it's fair for him to connect black lives matter with this black man who killed this white police officer. I think it's interesting that he contradicted himself when he said that all lives matter, but then he turned around and basically said, well, cops lives matter. Now, I thought we were, are we talking about everybody? We just talking about cops. You need to make up your mind, first of all. Second of all, you know, I don't know a ton about um, that situation. But he was executed. I, I guess that's the word that everybody's using. Um, he was shot and killed. But the question is, is there a, have they have they determined a reason why? Because I mean, don't I mean honestly? Because he's stupid. I mean, I, did he just roll up on a cop because they had nothing else to do and shoot him? Eh. I mean, I mean, I'm not that guy. But I I, I don't. I, there's sometimes where people do stuff for no reason at all, and then there's sometimes that there is a, a, just like Mr. Flanagan, he had a reason why he killed those people. Right? Did this dude have a reason why he killed him, or he was just like, back That's in the stupid. day, oh, let's just get this pig. Right. Pop, pop, pop. I mean, how they used to, back in like Boys in the Hood, they just roll on somebody and kill him. 
Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, Vester, uh, cousin Terry said that he's a coward. It's reported he had a change of clothes and took his own life. Any human that kills another human without provocation that endangers their own life and limb is committing a hate crime. So that was her opinion on that. And that's why Butler is still listening, and she is giving a shout out to you, Miss Lisa P. Oh, and hey, she, my sugar worker. I sure do wish I could kiss your back right now, because <laughs> I need you to be healed so you can come back in the den. Yes, yes we miss you. Yes, 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 we do. Black Lives Matter. This is a clip from the Phil Donahue show that is well over 20 years old, but it's very, very poignant to this moment. I want our particularly our people who have issues with Black Lives Matter, pay close attention to the voice you hear at the end of this clip. Take a listen. And I've heard a whole lot of negative things from the white people here. When you are trying to explain yourself, the white people don't want to hear you explain yourself. They drown you out. They start already trying to drown you out and talk over you. There's a certain amount of white arrogance here. And they don't want to listen to what black people are saying. They don't understand because they don't want to understand. I've heard a woman here say, go back to Africa. Somebody said, we have a black holiday. What does that mean? So what? What does that mean? He did not say that. He said, if we have a choice, well, some of us can go and some of us yeah. can yes, remember, But there's no understanding yes, in here. People are just trying to, to talk. To those arrogant persons. You know, when you tell us, go back. Please remember where you came from. And when you, when you want to relegate somebody to a specific place, just remember what your origin is in this world. Please, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I want you to understand that you, wherever you are on the earth, you are not a native anywhere. You came there and took it from the native people who are there. So please don't talk about going back because if others talk to you about that, where would you go? And you know how to step on Marcus J. Let's P. Farrakhan just asked the question. <laughs> if somebody told you go back to Africa, where would you go? What do you think about that? Yeah, well, just to put out there, I really don't want to go back to Africa because it's really, really you're like beyond lotion hot. So, <laughs> word you know, on that. I need to at least be somewhere where you know, for real, the good shea butter can you know be very lubricant, useful. But anyway, no, but for real. Um, and it's dry. Yeah, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Dry lips, dry skin, and all that. But anyway, um, that is true. Where where would they go? Um, I, th I think any time, listen, when they want to say go back to Africa, like go back to Africa, like to to me, I'll be honest with you, and you might so think this funny. is a stretch, you guys, but that to me is like more insulting than being called the N-word. Yeah, and, and you know, it's so funny, Marcus, and I, I don't know, I haven't talked to you in a while, but, you know, for for some reason here lately, I've been watching quite a few um black documentaries, you know, the PBS documentaries. And, you know, hearing, it's so funny how things change when the shoe is on the other foot. And I know I'm gonna sound so like, like I don't have a heart, but everybody who knows Lisa P knows that I have a heart. Okay, ow, ow, I do. But my thing is, look at back in the day when they used to just walk up to black people and just shoot them in the head in front of the whole town and that was almost like an event you know we get little cotton candy peanuts whatever they had back then and you know you watch a few black people get shot in the head or you get to watch a few people get hung and that was like an event you can't miss this event now that we fast forward quite quite a few years um, of course, like I said, we knew back then it was bad, but then fast forward, um, again, it almost looks like the Black Lives Matter movement is taking over and um, the white people are noticing. So, um, therefore, of course, it is ruffling their feathers, just like, again, back in slavery, we were slaves because they know the power that we have. Um, so, of course... You know, you're going to do what you need to do. And I think I hear the phone ringing. Do we have a call on Legacy Internet Radio? Go ahead. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Yeah. Hey, it's S.Y. Oh, hey, my sugar back. I'm serious. <laughs> if I could kiss your back right now, I would. I know. I heard dry lips. you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, girl? I miss you. Uh, what's up? Hey, Rube. How you doing? On? 
Oh, my God. Listen, I was cracking up laughing. I was like, shoot, heck yeah, she right. It's too hot. Plus, I'm scared of needles. You got to get shot first. <laughs> not going back. You're a mess. It's good to, it's good to, it's good to hear you. The, the listeners of Ain't No Half Step and Marcus J. haven't heard their co-host in quite a while. You want to give yeah. them an up? You want to give them an update on your backyotomy? You had oh, a backyotomy, gosh. right? Yeah, I miss you guys. Um, but I'm coming along, I'm recovering, you know, I have good days, I have bad days. Um, sometimes like today I'm doing fairly decent. I can sit up long enough, um, and try to listen. Other than that, it'll be back to bed. Um, the leg is doing better. I can walk a lot better on it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there and I'll, I'll be back soon. I'm getting there. I definitely appreciate you all. Well, we've been shouting out, out for me. We've been shouting out your comments as you've been throwing them out. Real quick, you want to say anything uh, about what we've been talking about before we move on? Oh my gosh, there's so much going on. You know, from these crazy people with Mike Vick. You know, get over it. Um, the shooting of the news reporter. You know, sad, sad situation. The um, the gentleman who lost his balance at the game, uh, I mean, how awful. It's just, you know, it's it's almost like I'm watching the news. It's, it's all these things are just so much. And, you know, so many tragedies at one time, you know, so close together. It's too many, it's too many things to mourn about. Right. Um, you know, the, the first thing we need to do is find something to be happy about and just kind of get on it, jump on that bandwagon and just go for it. Go for all the fun and the laughter because... Things happen, and some things are just so unexpected. You know, most of the times they are, but some things are just bad the way they happen. So just kind of hug up, laugh, and have fun, you know, while we can. I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus. That's Jay. what I'm here for. There you go. <laughs> no pudding. You can be happy at Big Rouge back in the den. Oh, oh most definitely. God. Yes, it's good yeah. to hear. It's good to hear from. I'm gonna be back co- soon. It's good to hear from you, co-host. I'm gonna get the crew in on. One more story before Big Rube takes over the show with his roundtable. So yeah. keep on listening. Uh, We're going to have Cousin Terry join us on the live line in the next segment. Right. And she's been uh, blogging with us. Uh, by the way, I'll tell you, uh, listen, Cousin, <laughs> Cousin Terry said that you are her new hero. Uh, she ain't never been to Africa, but she agrees <laughs> with you. She need that shea butter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, so she uh, that's, her, that's her comment. All right. That's why. We love you. We'll holler at you soon. Love you. All right, Peace. Love you too, guys. Take care. All right. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. As co-host of this show. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Miss S. Y. Okay. Butler. Can I can I just do a quick rundown of the Texas shooting real quick Go to for see it. if you know if it. you and Big Rube and of course the ain't no half stepping with Marcus J listeners and again if you all want to be interactive with us which we love you to we would love for you to um, the number here is eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. Eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. If your phone is off, go next door and use your neighbor's phone. You know that way you can get them to listen too. You know what I'm saying? Make it a family affair. But listen, uh, back to the Texas shooting. All right. So on the surveillance or what have you, from what I've heard, they stated that this black gentleman walked up to this police officer while he was pumping gas. The first shot that he let out was to his head. Once the officer dropped. He let out the rest of the bullets in the magazine, which was 14. So he let off a total of 15 bullets in one person. Okay. Then, from what I've heard, is that the person who supposedly did the shooting was driving a red pickup truck with, I guess, a white cooler in the bed part of it. Um, And when the police, however they find you, which we know that they all do, they will find you, um, went to the residence and the pickup truck was in the driveway. They went to the door, knocked on the door. Um, A gentleman comes to the door and they asked whose vehicle that belonged to and he stated that it was his brother's. Um, They asked, was his brother home? And they said no, that the brother was out with the mother. Just so happened while the police are standing there talking to the brother, the mother and the owner of the red pickup, supposedly the shooter, pulls up. So now the mother is stating that there was no way that it was her son who did this because she w- he was with her at the store. Now, the police officer asked the gentleman, the suspect, did he own a gun? The gentleman said yes, he owned a forty caliber. And they asked where did he keep it, and he said he kept it in a baseball bag um, in the garage. They get the gun. 
gun match shell casings, everything to the shooting at the station of the slain officer. So I guess I'm confused or I'm lost because how, you know, you know, and you know the parents. I'm not a parent. Marcus J., you know, parents say, I would stick up for my child, whether you are right or you are wrong. If this is the case, Marcus J., I know your daughter, Christina, would you alibi? We, let's run to the store real quick because I know they're coming. I don't see a world where I would dime my child out. I just don't see a world I would dime my child out. Well, but you don't need to dime your child out. All they need to simply do is do residue. A residue test. I mean, if oh, they, they did they, all that. Ballistics they, came yeah. back that it was the gun. Yeah. It was well, no, everything. no residue test on the person. Oh, I mean. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because With even the, like, if he, the hands, even if he was care, even if he had gloves on, residue gets on your arm. It gets all right, over and it so it would be. It doesn't matter if you dial them out or not. The only problem is if you if you choose not to dial them out. <laughs> And then you find they find out you knew, then you going down yeah, too. I guess so. Then I guess I. Have but to go, I, but, but I understand as a parent, you would never yeah, die. I don't, I don't see. Out. Yeah, I don't see a world like you'd have to do your police work and you figure this out on your own. Right. So because I'm not going to help you. Pulled up to the house and said, "Dad, I just did something How? stupid." I mean, I don't know that I would. You know, I don't. I don't want to overstate it, right. and make it seem like you know I'm going to give her some money and go send her to live with relatives in in in. In Montana, right? <laughs> ain't right. No relatives in Montana. I don't know where that came from. Ain't no black people no damn Montana. That's why you're gonna <laughs> that's, send that's, her. That's why you send her. They would never look there. No, that's why you send be, her. Yeah, she could be a fly in the snow. Anyway, um, I I would not encourage her to run. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm not gonna be calling up the cops saying, "Here she is, come get her." Well, I'm not doing that either. But I I guess my question to you is, and. I apologize if this offends you. I also, I also know how the system works, and I also would always question how fairly she's going to be treated, regardless of what she's being charged Correct. with. Correct. So I am not going to help this crooked system incarcerate my child, no matter what she did, personally. Right, and I think that's what the mother is doing here. You know, now how she's going to get away again, stating that she's not. it was not her son because he was at the store with me, and then just so happened, one of you know, them did the way that I saw it and I heard it on the news being broadcast is that as the police arrived there and was talking to the brother, that's when the mother and the suspect pulls up and says, "Oh, we was at the store." Well, the thing about it is, unless this is such a small town where they are, where they don't have cameras in the store. Which is highly possible, just not probable. You know, yeah, Texas. if you, my thing is, and I get it, and I'm not a parent, so I don't have that feeling that parents have of protecting a, a child. However, I honestly think if I, if I did something to that extent and my parents knew that I did it, they would not say, I don't think they'd be like, um, yeah, he did it. So do you think they would probably be like, boy, you need to start talking. So do you think they would turn you in? If you went to your parents' house and you said, mom, I just killed my girlfriend. Well, I wouldn't be stupid enough to go to my parents' house. You would, you, you would hopefully, as a, as a parent, personally, yeah. I, I would hope that I would be giving the kind of wise counsel to my child if you created the situation then you need to, to own up you need to own up and create in in, in in this situation yeah again you know i don't know what the future would hold for me my daughter's 12 you know so i don't know what's going to be like when i'm 51 and she's 22 yeah I, I don't know but what i can say is i don't see a world that i live in now where i would turn her in i just i just don't see that i don't see that world but i do see a world if i know she did something like this where i would be in her ear like you, you need to do the right thing and own up to that yeah and but you wouldn't try to give her an alibi no i wouldn't give her an alibi see and that's and i think that's the that's the I, don't, point. I don't i don't think i would give her an alibi yeah, but see that's I again that's what the yeah. mother did you know, I, I don't was at the store i don't think that i would but then again i, I just i it, don't know but it, i guess it depends on the situation because if you were to give her I an guess, alibi, I that means the, you would guess, know I what, the what's other, up. I guess the other thing is I would have to really – under I, I would really have to be in my fi my feelings with regards to what I feel her guilt is. You know what I mean? Like if I, if I know she did it, then I think that I might be more inclined to be more forceful with regards to her 
telling the truth, telling the truth and stuff. But if I know she didn't do it, then I'm stalling for as much time as I can well, so that I can get her as much help as I can. Correct. And I completely understand that. I yeah. guess the situation here is that this is a frightened mother. Man. Mother, yeah. mother knows he did it. Yeah. And knows that once he gets caught, he's done. And don't forget, it's all over the news by now. And they've seen him and everything. Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah. which to me is the crazy. But so you know, but there's knows. also, but there's also a precedent for the mother or the father to walk their kid right into the police department. You know what I mean? Or call the cops and say, "My kid is right here." You know what I mean? I've seen those cases as well. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? So I, I you know, it's, it's really. It's one of those situations where, you know, just because you're, you know, you know, I'm a parent because I'm a parent, I, I don't got to answer it. Because if you really, really pay attention and listen to what I've been saying since you asked the question, yeah. I'm all over the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I you should be. Yeah I'm, I'm yeah. I'm all over the place. And I don't, you know, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Ain't you no know, half stepping with Marcus. The last thing I want to get to, since we're talking about kids. Kids. We talking about kids. I hope this is the story I was looking at. I hope it is. Um, um, I, I hope it is. This is the mother in Arizona, Cheris Peterson. Is this it? Twenty seven no. years old, who was at the store shopping with her children, all of her children. She's got four. Uh and she admits that she forgot the baby in a shopping cart at the grocery store. Uh she is in Gilbert, Arizona. She was rushing around the store and when it was time for her to leave, she buckled the three year old in and Drove all the way home, and it was the three-year-old that says, hold on, wait a minute, where's the two-month-old? The three-year-old noticed. So, of course, she scurries back to the store, and she gets her kid, and uh, the Internet, of course, is rallying around her, saying what? that it was a simple mistake, and we shouldn't be so hard on her. Yeah, and please. Uh, well, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about, so... Bro, listen, what do y'all think? Really? What do y'all You think? left your kid she in drove, a... She drove away with her other kids, and the baby was found trifling. by the police. Nope, trifling. Now, now, the backdrop of this is, y'all do remember, uh, was it last year in Arizona? This one, I believe, was in Phoenix, Arizona. Gilbert and Phoenix are like Henrico and Richmond. So, Clearly. You know, they are. No, I yeah. know. I've been there. So I know they are. They're, they're, they're next to each other. So my point is the same kind of like jurisdiction. And Shanisha Taylor was the sister who left the kids in the car while she went to the job interview. And she was recently sentenced to 18 years of probation, supervised probation, 18 years. Obviously, you don't get something like that unless you got a felony, whereas they're trying to charge this, this woman, Cherish Peterson, with uh, a misdemeanor. And she's getting GoFundMes and social media and all that kind of stuff so i want to know what y'all think i mean hell wrong with these people that's what i think what the hell is wrong with these people well the last thing that i'll say before y'all comment is cherish peterson this this woman here she forgot her kid whereas miss taylor she knew she left her kid in the car so she can go for a job interview okay just figured i'd put that don't, out there don't care i mean let's just be i mean she's got a three-year-old She's got two others. So, she has four kids. You probably have one in the front seat. You probably have the three-year-old strapped up in the back seat. You have the other one in the, in the other seat, in the other seat, not in the seat thing. So, that means that the, the baby is strapped in the middle. So, are you sitting here and telling me that you forgot the kid in the middle? Heck yeah, she was saying, I got all these churn, I got all these groceries, either I'm going to get the food home and leave the kid here and I come back and pick them up. She was probably hoping that nobody recognized. It, it, but let me tell you something, where, now, where did she leave the baby? Now, if you left the baby in the cart where you put it in the cart holder, yeah, you know, yeah. that's a big push when you got to push the cart. Yeah, you know? So, which I, means I, the cart doesn't close. This yeah. is this is how, there's a, there's a photo of the baby. That's how they found the baby? That's how they found the baby. Yeah. And for those folks who can't Trifling. see the photo, the photo uh, just imagine the, the uh, shopping cart the right, the where the, right where the right the baby. If I'm the baby, I just, I just they, own my parents. The, ba the baby was found right where you would put the groceries mm -hmm. uh, in the car. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Live from the den. Legacy in that radio. Call up where you call it from, what you want to talk to us about tonight. What's up? Caller, you there? Is that me? Yes, yes, you call her. Call her, you on the live line. And I know who you are, but the listeners don't. Ain't no hashtag with Marcus J. Call her, tell them who you are. What's up, 
famous cousin Terry. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? She a little bit early. Uh, we gonna have her in the next segment, but I know why you're calling in right now, and I'm calling in a little early. Go ahead and get to it. All right. Who me now? Girl, you better talk and act like you've been on the radio before. <laughs> Listen, I'm sitting here talking. I thought you said next segment, and I guess I didn't follow my instructions, but I am loving the show tonight. Miss L? Hey, boo boo. You is killing me with the shea butter. Okay. Okay, I'm about to get that. And hey, Big Rube, how you doing? What's up? What's up, Cousin Terry? I ain't talked to you since reality versus real TV. <laughs> oh, then you you in for a great day today. You in for it. All right, we get ready to we get ready to take that break. But before we do that, you wanted to get in on Cherish. So what what you want to get on a Cherish about? Yo, for real, I don't know how many times I tried to leave my kids in the store, and somebody found me. <laughs> That's what I was saying. You a mess. You a- my daughter keeps finding me because she said that I buy better snacks. Oh my god! All right, so you right. so, so you gonna give, you gonna give us a comedic like, version? You gonna tell us what you really think? Say it again, Ruth. I said you gonna give us the comedy. You gonna tell us what you really think of Cherish? No, this is really what I think of Cherish. Mm-hmm. I I really this is BS with her leaving her kid. If it's a little baby, it's in the shopping cart. The baby is looking dead at you. Right. right. While you're putting your things in the car. Right. You right. go 40 minutes away before you realize that a three-month-old baby that cries a lot wasn't back there crying. And they're trying to charge her with a misdemeanor. I, what, do you, misdemeanor what do you think? Misdemeanor What do you think? What do you think about the difference between how she's being charged and how the other sister was charged, the Shalisha Taylor? I, I don't know if I got a chance to post it, but, um, and I'm really not one to pull up race cards or anything like that, but come on. Any other woman, it'd have been like she lost her women, her, she lost her kids. Her kids are in the care of, you know, the Department of Child Protective Services or living with relatives or something like that. She forgot one kid and still got to go home with three. Right. Something wrong with that. You know, Cousin T, I feel that. When it comes down to this case and when she does have to go to family court, it's going to come down with some sort of postpartum. I mean, she has how many kids? Um, She looks like she's a young woman. And, yeah, and I'm pretty sure the oldest is what probably no more than five. So you have a two-month-old, a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and maybe a six-year-old. No, one's got to be two's got to be older than that because they weren't in car seats. Right. So they had to be at least six or seven. Okay. She left her kid. You think she's worried about buckling and the rest of them? Well, up? no, but there was but only one in get, the car we seat. Have, we got to get these groceries home. Y'all crying. Y'all getting on my Stop. nerves. Okay. Stress. Let me get a couple of comments in. Uh, that's why I said it's hard to tell a parent what you will actually do when you're in the situation. She's going back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, listen, Rue. Uh-huh. Uh, then she says that she calls BS uh, on leaving the baby. Uh, yeah, she she's also shouting out you, cousin Terry, uh, and also Hakeem is listening. Uh, he says, "What's up to you, Big Ruby? Ain't heard you uh, in a little bit of while." And of course, uh, Big Rube, uh excuse me, of course, Hakeem. That's uh, why I wanted to make sure that I specifically shouted you out once you checked in. So uh, glad to have you in. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. All right, Terry, I'm gonna get you back on the line in just a minute. So I'm gonna drop you for now, and I'm gonna get you back in in just a minute. So stay by your phone. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. What I'm gonna do is I want a special guest that's gonna join us to take us in the break, and he is going to tell you exactly what Black Lives Matter is all about. Marcus J, Lisa P, Cousin Terry, and the crew. Ain't ow, no half-stepping with Marcus J. Really? Take a listen to this, brother. You're going to be shocked in the words he says. For walking while black. My son has been um, arrested for walking while black. Um... So well, I get a, a, it. A lot of sons have been arrested. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it doesn't make me, you know, you can't buy your way out of this one. You can't educate your way out of it. Um, it's just it's, happening too much, or at least we know about it now. It's, it's always happened. Um, we see more evidence of it. And too often people still are inclined to say, well, if he'd had a different attitude, well, if he hadn't been driving, well, if he hadn't been this, if he hadn't been that, almost as if the victim is partially to blame. 
you know, mm -hmm. in the case of Garner. Well, he shouldn't have resisted. In the case of Brown, well, where was he? In the case of Trayvon, well, he had a hood on, you know, and in, in, in the case of whoever, you know, in case of uh, Sandra Bland, you know, well, her attitude was better. It's like, no, stop, stop. This has nothing to do with the victims. This has everything to do with the culture of demeaning a person of color. And, and there is no justification for a society where my son has a far greater chance of being stopped, held, killed than your son, simply because he's black.